Shalom. All praises to Yahweh Ba Shemi Hoshai. Double honors to the elders of GMS. Shalom to you brothers out there. This is your brother Ayathun. And uh, this is yet another podcast. This uh, topic um, is going to be on all of our, our, all of us, our favorite topic in GMS. And that's the topic of faith. You know, all the stories that we grew up, grew up on, that I grew up on, before even coming into the truth, learning the main story was Moses because they played the Ten Commandments on, uh, on TV growing up. Now, even though the show was called the Ten Commandments and, um, Moses, uh, through, you know, the commandment of the Lord delivered the, ten, the commandments to the Israelites, <clears throat> the great works and the wonders that Moses did, <clears throat> excuse me, was because of his faith through Yahweh, through the Most High. You know, it was Moses's, it was Moses' faith that allowed him to do the miracles that he did and to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. Now, in no means are we at GMS or was I ever taught by my elders that we don't have to keep the law. I mean, when we speak at the camp, the main thing, one of the main things we always bring out is the law. You know, I mean, what? why else is America going to be destroyed? Is not America going to be destroyed for not following the law's commandments of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai? Was not Yahweh Shai whose name we proclaim? Was he not all about the law? Did he not say that I came out to break the law nor the commandments? <clears throat> so where is this rumor, this lie spreading about that GMS does not keep the law? Let me bring out a scripture to set this off. This is in the book of Psalms. Now this, the book of Psalms was written by who? By King David. King David is who are we are, uh, we're waiting for to be risen because King David, all of Israel is going to be united under Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and then under King David. Pursuant to uh, Amos, I believe the name, the ninth chapter. Okay. Where it says that uh, King David is going to be risen up and uh, Israel is going to be brought back together. We're going to go back to the land of Israel and take our land back. So we're, we are waiting for King David. And this is what he said. Psalms chapter 1, starting at verse 1. It says, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So yes, for the record, you're supposed to keep the laws to the best of your ability. But is faith void because you're keeping the law? No. Now the thing about the law is there's there's many laws on different levels. For example, the sun and the moon. The Lord gave a law to the sun, the greater light, and the Lord gave a law to the moon, which is the lesser light. The times and the seasons, those are laws. All right. Um, what else? You have laws you can't see, like the laws of physics. That's a law. You have the law of gravity. That's another law. So there's, there's a, a bunch of laws on different levels. You also have the law of sin and you have the law of life. So two-thirds of Israel, they are bound by the law of sin. One-third of Israel, the elect, they are bound by the law of life. Now let me read this in Romans, the eighth chapter. This is the first verse. It says, There is therefore 
now no condemnation to them which are in Yahawashai, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahawashai hath made me free from the law of sin and death. What is the law of sin and death? Well, the law in, of sin and death is if you break the laws, the commandments of the Lord, then you die. Does, do not the scripture say the wages of sin are death? Now, two-thirds of Israel, the niggas out there, they are bound by the law of sin and death. Meaning what? They're going to die for breaking the Most High's commandments. Now, do we... Us the one third. Have we not broken the Lord's commandments? Yes. But guess we what we are saved by? We are saved by the faith in Yahweh Shai. I'm going to read this again. Romans 8 and 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahweh Shai, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahweh Shai hath made me free from the law of sin and death. What is what is the law of the spirit of life in Yahweh Shai? That's the law of faith, having faith in Yahweh Shai. That makes us, the elect, free from the law of sin and death. Why? Because it's the, according to the, uh, the, the commandments, if you break certain commandments, uh, you die. That's a judgment. Now, the elect, through the Yahweh Shai, there is no condemnation as the scripture has said because Yahweh Shai became that perfect sacrifice which freed us from that law, the law of the sin. Yahweh Shai has freed us from the law of the sin. Therefore, if you're part of the elect, because it all boils down to if you are elect. I don't care how many laws you keep or you try to keep because it's totally impossible to keep the law. And if you break one law, you break all the other laws. So there's no way in hell that you can justify yourself by keeping a law. It's impossible. Okay? So I'm going to read verse 2 again. It says, For the law of the spirit of life in Yahweh Shai had made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, meaning it was not the law that was weak, the law was not imperfect, the law is perfect. Matter of fact, the law... In the kingdom of heaven, we're, we're going to go back to the same laws and we're going to follow it perfect because what was weak is going to be made perfect, which is us, this flesh that we're in. This flesh is susceptible to demons. Therefore, we need Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai, um, like the scripture said, um, the Lord said about King David, um, he said that um, blessed is the man whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity <laughs> so the elect there is no sin in them they're perfect there's no condemnation to them that is in Yahweh Shai but the elect through their faith they're going to keep the laws to the best of their ability because what does judges say judges say that we shall rehearse the righteous acts you know you have something called practice runs Esau even Esau does practice runs for his new world order there's these different chaoses that he sets off and these different um, attacks. Those are practice. Those are practice runs, because he's got to do it. He's got to keep doing it over and over and over and over again, so that by the time it comes for the real, the real deal, he's covered all grounds and he's been through it so many times that he he could do it without um, without any hesitation or without any disturbances. But, you know, the thing is with him, he doesn't, he left out was that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to step in, step in. So right now, us, the, uh, Israel, Israel, one third of us, we're in our practice run right now. We're keeping the laws to the best of our ability, but it, it's impossible for us to get a hundred percent until we get into the kingdom and the Lord corrects the imperfection, which is our body and gives us those new bodies and implants the laws in our spirit, in our mind, then we will keep the law perfect. Okay? So let me read on. Verse 3. Uh, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, 
Yahweh sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in a flesh now you have um you have uh guys out there Nate is the main guy I can think of uh saying that we're faulted GMS is faulted for being faith uh based Israelites and he boasts himself in the law um you know so so see he Nate has started this doctrine that you're saved by the law that it's not by faith it's by the law so Nate through his pride you know like the scripture the scriptures do say evil men wax worse and worse so what Nate is doing now you know he's putting these videos up of a uh, feast of tabernacles going to into the woods and like the elders say to him it's a it's a competition you know and um you know he's jealous he's trying to he's jealous of uh, elder Tahar he's jealous of the other elders he's jealous of GMS as a whole so he's trying to outdo us but the thing is the most high ain't impressed by you going out in the woods and setting up a couple tents I, the most high you're not going to be delivered cuz you cuz you went camping one night you know i mean that that's simple but anyway my point is that he he uh his clan he faulted GMS for having faith in Yahweh Bashem Shai. Now, I have here uh, the etymology of the word faith, and I'm just going to go straight to the point. The word, the root word of uh, faith comes from the Latin fidel, which means to trust. So to have faith in Yahweh Shai means to trust in Yahweh Shai. So when Nate is essentially saying that it is wrong to trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, it's wrong to trust in the Lord. So anybody that follows a guy like that is straight up out of his mind and is a zombie, you know? Now I have a next scripture here. Let's go to, uh, let me see which one do I want to bring here. Let's read Romans because Nate's uh, thing and, and men like him are, they boast themselves in the law. If you boast yourselves in the law, if you boast yourself in the law, and you disannul faith, basically you're disannulling Yahweh Shai, you're disannulling our Savior. Because if you can be saved by the law, then what need is there of Yahweh Shai? What need was there for him dying on the cross, spilling his blood to deliver the elect? If we were to be saved by keeping the laws, then there would be no need for that. He would never have had to come. Now this is Romans, the third chapter, verse 23. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That line right there proves you cannot be uh, saved by keeping a law. You could, you, we could, I could cut this off right now. Verse 24. It says, being justified freely by his grace through the, re through the redemption that is in Yahweh Shai. So how are we justified? Is it by f the law? No. Verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Yahweh Shai. Verse 25, whom the Most High Yahweh has set forth to be a propitiation through faith. Does it say through the law? No, it says through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of Yahweh, of Yahweh the Most High. Verse 26, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier, <coughs> excuse me, and the justifier of him which believeth in Yahweh Shai. Now, if you go and look up the word faith, another word or synonym for the word faith is belief. So, and the justifier of him which hath faith in Yahweh Shai. Verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. So the scriptures say all of us fell short of the glory of Yahweh Shai and that the redemption is through faith in Yahweh Shai. So how, where is the boasting of the law? I keep the law. You're saved by the law. Where, where is that? That has no place. Verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what? Excuse me. It is excluded. By what law? 
of works? Nay, but the law of faith. So to you, Nate, you followers of Nate, and all of you who believe that we are saved by the law, guess what? Us here at GMS, we follow the greatest law of all, which is the law of faith, which is the only law that will deliver you and take you into the kingdom of heaven without getting splattered by an ICBM missile. The law of faith. Let me read it again. Verse 27, Romans 3 and 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. And you will never hear GMS boast about how we keep the laws so well. Never. What you'll always hear us say, always, is that we keep the laws to the best of our ability. And that we are saved through faith in Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahawashai, and that name only. And anybody out there who says otherwise, their future is death, straight up. Now verse 28, it says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified, <clears throat> excuse me, that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Do I need to read that again? Verse 28, Romans 3 and 28. Therefore we conclude, meaning this is a conclusion, that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Because I have another scripture which I'm going to read. And as I said earlier, you could keep all the freaking laws till you turn blue in the face. But if Yahweh, if you're not on that list, all right, when Yahweh Shai died, if you're not on that list, that elect list, your ass is not going to make it. Bottom line, I don't care how many laws you claim you follow. All right, it says, um, verse 29, is he the power only of of the Jews only? Because what were the Jews boasting? And the Jews boasted in the law. And then you got a lot of scoffers out there that say that we're the Pharisees. How the F do you figure that we're the Pharisees? The last name the Pharisees would, you would ever, ever hear them utter out is Yahweh Shai. And we're the main, uh, group that boasts the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says, is he the power only? Excuse me, is he the power of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Why? Did Paul feel the need to mention that? Because the Gentiles are saved through what? They're saved through faith. Because they were casted off by the Jews. Because the Jews boasted in the law. But what was their stumbling block? The stumbling block was Yahweh Shai. Alright? And that effed them up in the head. Because Yahweh Shai told them, he said, um, he said where I go, you, you cannot come. Right? And then he, they said, where is he going to go? To the Gentiles? Well, Yahweh Shai did go to the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles um, were more found more righteous than most than those wicked Pharisees because they had faith in Yahweh Shai. Alright? Verse 30. Seeing, seeing it is one power which shall justify, justify the circumcision by faith. It didn't say by law. It said justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? The Most High forbid, yea, we establish the law. <laughs> Why do we establish the law? Because faith is a top law of them all. And with faith, you're going to do the works regardless. All right? Yahweh Shai said when he comes back, who shall he find doing his work? All right? Now, I'm going to give you an example of a man who approached Yahweh Shai, and he was following all the laws, but he was missing one thing, which was faith. And for that uh, commandment that he failed to follow along, which is a commandment or the law of faith, he, he this dude is not going to make it. Now, this is in a um, book of, uh, excuse me, let me, so I get it. Sorry, give me a second, brothers. 
Um, where is it here? Okay, I'm sorry, brother. Um, this is not it. Well, you know what? I'll read this, and then I'll find the, the one I uh, I was looking for. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. This is a uh, Luke. 23 and 38 this is when Yahweh Shai was on the cross with the two male factors now this right here is um, an example to prove that you're not saved by the law but by through faith now this is uh, Luke 23 I'm starting at 38 it says a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew this is the king of the Jews verse 39 and one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him saying if thou be the anointed save thyself and us he was being a straight nigger verse 40 but the other answer answering rebuked him saying dost not thou fear the most high seeing thou art in the same condemnation and we indeed justly for we receive the due reward for our deed for our deeds for this man have done nothing amiss because Yahweh Shai never broke one commandment. Verse 42 And he said unto Yahweh Shai, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. This man had faith. Now, this man was a sinner. He was on the cross and he, uh, he confessed that he deserved to be there for, uh, whatever sins he had committed. But, he proclaimed Yahweh Shai and he put his faith in him and he's, and what led him to say this, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And what did Yahweh Shai say to him in verse 43? And Yahweh Shai said unto him, Verily, I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. So from there on, that man was, well, he was sealed from, from the beginning of time, but, um, Yahweh Shai sealed him and that, that man is going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Was it because he kept all the laws until he met? No, when he met Yahweh Shai, he was on a cross, um, for, for, um, for being whatever wicked deed he had did. And it was probably some wicked ass, um, Pharisees that condemned him for the same things that they were doing. But the point is this man was a sinner and he wasn't keeping the law. What saved him was that he, he had faith and he proclaimed um, in Yahweh Shai that he was the Lord and Savior. And from then point on, the Lord told him, look, um, you're going to see me in the kingdom. Now, uh, Slaki, let me, just give me one second here. Let me find the scripture I want to find, the other one. And um, if I don't find it, I'll just quote it. Um, Slaki, okay, I I think I found it here. Okay, so this is it right here. Now, this is a, an example of a man, you know, like Nate, boasting he kept the law. But one thing this man did not have was faith in Yahweh Shai, and that uh, that sealed him for death. Now, this is Luke chapter 18, and I will start at verse 19. That matter of fact, I'll start at 18. It says, And a certain ruler asked him, this is ask Yahweh Shai, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Yahweh Shai said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Because this dude was basically kissing ass. Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is the Most High, Yahweh. Verse 20, Thou knowest the commandments, Do not commit adultery, Do not kill, Do not steal, Do not bear fault witness, Honor thy father and mother. And he said, The all these have I kept from my youth up. So this man kept all the laws from his youth up. <laughs> verse 23, verse 22. And when Yahweh Shai heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. So basically this dude had to uh, sell everything and whatever money he got, give it to the poor and basically drop his lifestyle and follow Yahweh Shai. Now to do that, that takes a lot of faith. The disciples did it. Peter did it. The disciples did it. They dropped everything they had and they followed Yahweh Shai. 
So what was this man's reaction who kept all the laws, who justified and boasted himself in the laws? You know, did Yahweh Shai give him a, I don't know, did Yahweh Shai give him props? I'll read 22 again. Now when Yahweh Shai heard these things, he said unto him, Yet thou lackest one thing. So it don't, it don't really sound like Yahweh Shai was impressed because he kept, kept all the laws. He said, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Verse 23. So this is this man's reaction. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful. <laughs> For he was very rich. And when Yahweh Shai saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of heaven? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of the Most High. <clears throat> so, uh, that's the point right there. So that shows you, I hope, this, uh, these were some good examples and a clear explanation of why we are not justified by the law. But rather by faith in Yahweh Shai. And through the faith in Yahweh Shai, you're going to establish the law. Meaning you're going to try much more harder to keep the laws. It goes one in one. But you're not going to keep the laws if you don't have any faith. If you don't have any trust. Because what is faith? Faith is the faith is a substance of things hoped for but not seen. What we're hoping for is the kingdom of heaven. And for us to achieve that goal... Just like uh, in the world, you got niggas, they want to achieve being a, a, a doctor or becoming rich. So what do they do? They go to school, they get a PhD. Because why? They have faith or they have trust in that PhD. They trust that in that PhD they will reach their goal, which is to make it big or to live a good lifestyle, to have the American dream. Well, us, on the other hand, our trace or our trust or our faith is in Yahweh Shai and to, our goal is the kingdom of heaven and to reach that goal we must have, must have faith and uh, along with that faith what we must do is try to keep the commandments of the Lord and part of those commandments is going out and speaking okay and and uh, you know that's it you know so just to recap the final statement is that, yes, GMS, we believe in keeping the laws, but we keep, we keep perfectly the most important law of all, which is the law of faith. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakatham, Double honors to the elders of GMS, to you brothers out there, stay strong and keep the faith. Shalom.